the finger jab is the most effective attack. Hi guys, Dan the Wolfman here, and obviously we're talking about Bruce Lee and his five favorite techniques and how that still relates to MMA with live MMA examples and street fighting self-defense. I've trained martial arts 35 years, got four black bolts, fought pro in MMA, and used his favorite JKD techniques in high-level MMA. Also, I have a four and a half hour combatives and street jiu-jitsu DVD on BJJ Fanatics. So effective self-defense is very much true to my heart as what it was when I was 15, 16 years old, greeting the Tao of Jeet Kune Do. You see Bruce Lee mixing it up here, showing an arm bar way back in the day, high kicks, boxing, trapping from Wing Chun, how to use everything effectively, high kick there. See trapping skills here against the great Chuck Norris. And uh, I share a lot of footage uh, later on in the video, some footage of Bruce Lee you may have never seen, and all uh, more um, footage from MMA showing some of his favorite techniques. We saw the eye jab in the beginning, and now here he's talking about using the longest weapon to the nearest target, the lead leg sidekick to the knee, and also the oblique kick to the knee used by John Jones, Conor McGregor, etc. and so forth. Great at keeping your uh, opponent at bay. In fact, later we'll see footage of me using it back in 1997, way before it became a bit trendy uh, to do so. So Bruce was ahead of his time talking about the various ranges of combat, taking what's most effective from each martial art. And those include the oblique kick, as you're seeing here. Talked about the side kick to the knee. Talked about the finger jab a, a bit early on. The video would be too long to share all those examples, used a lot by John Jones and others in the UFC, whether accidentally or not. So you have the eye jab, or tiger claw to the eyes. You have the side kick to the knee. Sliding side kick to the knee. You have the oblique kick to the knee. You have straight blast, which I was the first to and only to do it in uh, professional MMA and in Akuto World Championships as well. You'll see footage of that and his trapping skills and hand traps that he got from Wing Chun and incorporated into his JKD or Jeet Kune Do way of intercepting fist. We see some hand traps here. Tony Ferguson going to throw that elbow over the top. And now we see Anderson Silva. You'll see me doing trapping hands with. Some more footage of Bruce here. Trapping skills at Long Beach. See a boxer doing it here, pulling that down to land the hook over the top. And Tony Ferguson working the uh, wooden dummy and then applying it in MMA. Hand trap to elbow over the top a couple times here against... Donald Cowboy Cerrone. So guys, I hope you like my channel. And a thumbs up, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I even have a JKD and Wing Chun playlist. Uh, but I incorporate all styles, the best from each. How to blend them together as you go through the ranges of combat. Which is what Bruce was an exponent of. See him doing his grappling skills in the opening scene. Enter the dragon here. Probably learned quite a bit of them. The drawings could actually be copy sketches uh, from Judo Jean LaBelle, who I have a black belt under, Judo Jean and Gokor Shevichian. See the jab now to the single leg takedown. So he was already thinking about not just wrestling, but using striking uh, to set up your entries into takedowns before MMA was really even around. I mean, they really had Valley Tudo in Brazil, but I don't believe he was ever aware of that. So you see GSP here jabbing into his single leg takedowns. See some neck manipulations, leg locks, manipulations, double leg takedown here, the growing punch. Now Bruce wasn't trying to come up with MMA. He was trying to come up with MMA for street fighting, the most effective way to express yourself for street fights and self-defense. Hence, eye jabs, growing strikes, uh, focusing on kicks to the knee, etc. 
So you will make yourself a better martial artist if you focus on his five favorite attacks. Here's some footage of me. A little bit of film fighting I choreographed within an hour and filmed with uh, this lead in the movie. Here's some chi Sao playful. I'm on double outside. Playful chi Sao with Big Country Roy Nelson, who had legitimate chi Sao skills. Kind of kung fu-ish takedown I do there. Even He said, do drunken kung fu. So he's a football player. Here's my drunken kung fu sag headlock takedown. But being able to flow, be non-telegraphic, I talk about that in other videos and other YouTubers, guys. You know, it's about finding the principles and the concepts from various martial arts and making them uniquely your, your own. <clears throat> How to fight effectively, flow through the ranges of combat, the chaos of combat, as I do Chi Sao with the great Anderson Silva, and stop the whole press conference, and everyone apparently stopped and just watched. Well, I landed a punch on him there. So the three months I was training at Black House and sparring Leota Machida and Roger Gracie and, and guys like that. So hopefully you guys will enjoy my channel. Let's look at some more Bruce Lee footage here now. Trapping skills and down at Long Beach. I try to take what I thought was the best footage I have in my playlist. Some stuff maybe you've never seen before. Depending on how big of a diehard of Bruce Lee you are. But as far as a philosopher to mix the best from each style and put it all together and not just follow what he did, but make it uniquely your own. You got to understand the philosophy behind the man behind Jeet Kune Do. Here's me doing the first straight blast in pro MMA back in 2000 against pink race champion. Yuki Kondo who fought Tito for the light heavyweight title sliding sidekick, a straight blast at the Daido Juko headquarters in Japan, how to straight blast on the ground to lead you into elbows and clear the path, how to trap on the ground. I've been teaching that for a long, long time and still neglected. And then going into a straight blast there, I got a couple punches in after the overhand right missed at the Daido Juko Kudo First World Championships in 2001. See the sliding roundhouse kick we haven't really covered from Bruce, but he was a big favorite of that. And the sliding side kick to the gut. I also did that against Ken Velasquez when I sparred him. And then regretted it, thinking he'd kick my butt. Some straight blast action. How to use that oblique kick to set up the flying switch kick. The one it's punch showing that it's more of a lap push. Before we watch um, other footage in the UFC and why not, here's footage of me using JKD-ish techniques, fast techniques in MMA myself back in the day. Because I had trained Jeet Kune Do and was a fan of Bruce and the Tao Ji Kundo and all of that. So there's that straight blast again. I think it's important to take note of that. It was a good opener in the fight against a much more experienced fighter to get in his head. Punching quickly from bottom, flowing, boom, kicking from bottom. Now I'm going to get to a lot of John Jones and Anderson Silva footage trapping and uh, knee kick footage. So please stay tuned and always thumbs up, share, subscribe. Get down there in the comments. Let me know what you think. Flowing kick punch, flowing through the range, just front kick to the chin and guillotine back in 1997. Sliding side kick to the leg and chest in 97. That's long before people thought you could even make kicks work in mixed martial arts called no holds barred fighting. Back then, let's see that straight blast again at the World Championships. He, he actually used Wing Chun in the fight with Pettis. He trapped his hand and hit him with an elbow once. I'm going to win by some sort of knee stump, to be honest with you. That's how the fight's going to be over. Oh, man, that's a nice technique. Wing chunk technique. Oh, that's all well. That side kick that he's throwing hyper extends the knee. John's really starting to incorporate that a lot into his game. And it's a very frustrating kick to do with. And again, another side kick to the knee. Jumping side kick to the knee. Yeah, so unpredictable. So knee kick and keeps throwing. Hyper extends the knee. There you see his knee hyperextended. Oblique kick. Uh, Joe Rogan famously named it. We call it push kicks to the knee. And uh, we have some other passwords for that move. Uh, but it's a great technique. It keeps my opponents at bay. Um, you know, it's a great offensive move, a great defensive move. What it does, though, is it keeps your opponent at bay. He loves that technique. It stops you in your tracks, literally. Oh, man, that's a nice technique. A weak chunk technique. His distance and length is such an effective technique. Very controversial because they, they hyperextend the knee if they land correctly, but sort of a leg lock. The idea that those should be illegal, I think.
is pretty silly. And Jones as you have said many times, Jesus has been better than anybody. Yes. Give them a little rump for the rest of their lives. Rump for the rest of their lives. For the rest of their lives. John Jones is a true physical freak.